please. Thanks, Giancarlo and Dirk and PK for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you about choices of balloon expandable versus self-expanding uh, stents. Some of this is overlap, but I'd like you to hear one version of it here. All right. Um, so the, let's start with the advantages. Balloon expandable stents that have increased radial strength and they're very precise, and you can make them bigger with post dilatation. The balloon expandable cover stents, as we've heard, may be superior for uh, task C and D and more complex lesion sites. Uh, what are the disadvantages of balloon expandable stents? Well, it's one rigid tube and it's the same size, diameter, all lengths. It's not as tailorable. Um, it may, it's balloon expandable and has fire, higher forces on more fragile vessels um, and it is more rigid and less conformable. What about self-expanding stents? Again, you can uh, oversize them up front with less risk and they're very good for uh, transitions. For example, common iliac artery to external iliac artery. Uh, they're less traumatic to the external iliacs, uh, less likely to compromise a side branch perhaps, and they have a lot larger diameters that in some of these settings may be very beneficial. The big disadvantage is the decreased radial strength and they have a lot more recoil, sadly often at the very ends of them where you need them the most. They're less precise, have less scaffolding, and you cannot make it bigger than the size on the box. You can't over expand it beyond its diameter. So when do we use balloon expandable stents? For the vast majority of common iliacs, as you've heard, especially proximally, uh, when you need precise placement, or in, and we use balloon expandable cover stents, the higher uh, the risk or the more order iliac reconstruction, or the more risk if we're treating, or if we're treating ISR. Self-expanding stents, usually in external iliacs or that transition zone uh, when we need a larger stent. And we use the self-expanding covered stents like the Viabon self-expanding for external iliac or common femoral perforations. Uh, so let's look at some cases. This one's got everything involved. This is a right common iliac stenosis, left external iliac stenosis, right external iliac occlusion. Multiple ways to do this. We did this from above. This is a balloon expandable, uh, uh, I'm sorry, balloon getting better results after a non-compliant. And then we place a night null stent in the external iliac and post dilate it. This here's a good result. It facilitates a micropuncture uh, five French sheath below there to continue on with a sheath from the, I'm sorry, catheter from the left to help guide us in the right. And then with a brachial um, shuttle sheath, start to work on the right external iliac. Here's that nub, and we like to go antegrade, like the case that's being shown here. We really like to go antegrade if possible and try to stay in the lumen. Here is confirming a luminal position. And then again, I think it's very important to get information from your predilatation in terms of length. Here's our conservative uh, balloon resurrecting flow. We actually did a little pre-dilatation of that common iliac lesion before putting a night null stent that was guided by the information we got during pre-dilatation on a roadmap. We post-dilate most external iliac or night null stents, and here's the result in the uh, external iliac CTO. And then back to the common, when we need more precision, again, we've got a catheter from the other side that allows us to very precisely position our balloon expandable stent and final result in all three lesions. Here's a case like Andre's case from this morning. Uh, this was one we did as a, bi a live case a few weeks ago. Um, and you can see the same thing, the occlusion of the aorta, bilateral uh, common iliac occlusions. And like they did, we used triple access. Uh, get across that and do balloon dilatation. And you can see that while we restored flow, clearly there's dissection. So this is the best of all worlds. This is a, a 22 by 45 ovation stent graft. That's a night and all type of uh, procedure or uh, device. You can see some of the limitations of night and all. It's underexpanded and it went forward just a hair. So it's post dilated. And then we used a Viabon BX to get more radial strength in here and to get us closer to the bifurcation. So we position that. And as been mentioned, you can take it up to a 16 in the aorta. And then we put Viabon BXs up into that. Now going back and forth to what kind of stent, we've got a nice result in the common, but you see the dissection extending from the common into the external. That's a great place to use a night and all stent. And here's a night and all stent. Now there's a little bit more problem here. So again, like uh, has been shown up there, we snared a wire into an FR4 catheter, 
so that we can do this last dent from above so we don't get too close to the common femoral artery. And here we stent that from above from that externalized wire and a nice result in all with a combination of nitinol and uh, balloon expandable stents. Last uh, case, here's a ruptured external iliac artery pseudoaneurysm. This was a transplant patient. The, the transplant had failed, so they were on dialysis, but they ruptured the pseudoaneurysm. And you can see there's also tight calcific disease in an area of tortuosity. So after pre-closing, a big ansel sheath is around. Cross this, this is a uh, measurement with a uh, 50 centimeter quick cross dots. Ivis, you can see we couldn't get a non-compliant balloon across, so we downsized, ballooned it a little bit harder. Again, with our Viabon already ready, measured by Ivis. And then we put our sheath down here over the dilator so that we could deliver 11 by 50 Viabon, self-expanding nitinol stent because it's external iliac. Here's the Viabon and the post dilatation and the final result that treats both the uh, stenosis and the rupture. So in conclusion, aorta iliac stenting is, has really become frontline for a significant majority of symptomatic patients with obstructive disease, but it really requires an individualized approach using the advantages of the different kind of stents and a tailored approach. And I will say that these are not, some of these cases that Andre shows, you should not watch this and do that in your first or second year going out in my opinion. Um, so thank you very much for your attention.